our main topic for the day is who should pay the bill? Now, it's a big conundrum that a lot of people run into, and I decided to talk about it because sure, it might rub people wrong the wrong way. Sure, people might be like, oh, is he talking about me? But look, like I said, this is not to offend anyone. This is just me telling the truth that I know. Now, I try to break it into different segments. It's almost like a, a big web of who should pay. Now, the three things I broke it down by was one, obligation, two, communication slash crowd, and then three, whatever you want to do. Now, I'm going to go down a couple scenarios. I'm going to go down a couple scenarios. In addition to that, I'm going to go through a couple things that maybe I've been through or put myself in hypothetical situations. Now, scenario number one, the most common run, right? Who should pay on a date? Now, this one gets a lot of backlash, right? Because it's like, obviously, the, let's say, old school chivalrous style is the man should always pay. But obviously, with things that have changed, with things getting more expensive, with just the way lifestyles have become, should the woman pitch in? Should the woman pitch in for half? Or let's say you split it with, you know, like exactly what you have. She had a burger and fries. I had a steak and fries. So do we split it like that? Or does she eat some of my steak costs and we cut the bill straight in half? Or the, of course, the classic alternative, which I just mentioned, is do I just pay the whole bill? Does the guy pay the whole bill? Now, understand, I'm talking about a guy-girl relationship here. As a guy-guy, a girl-girl, I do not know. I am just going down what I know. Now, the guy-girl piece. Should the guy pay? My answer is always going to be yes. I try to be a proper gentleman. As outlandish as I may seem, as loud as I may be, rambunctious, whatever adjective you want to use, I still try to pride myself on being a chivalrous gentleman. Now, that's just, you know, how I was raised. Sure, it's different for other people, whatever. But my stance has always been, I will pay. On the first date, of course, it is me. Now, as we progress with dates, things change a little bit. Things do change a little bit. The only thing I want as the dates progress is the person to at least offer to pay. Right? We go to, let's say, Chili's. We get a couple dishes. We get some other food. Bill comes out, all I want you to say is, all I want you to do is just reach for your wallet. Just reach for your wallet, and I'm going to do the whole, oh, no, 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 don't, no, 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 you're good, you're good. And then I'm going to pay. Now, there's a lot of folds to this. There's a lot of folds to this, right? Once you get into a long-term relationship, it's just not sustainable. It's not sustainable for the guy to continuously pick up the check. Now, I'm talking about my scenario, right? Obviously, if you got it good, if you got it good and you feel perfectly comfortable with paying for every single meal, then do your thing. Oh, well, she's being a gold digger. Well, you got gold. So who cares? Who cares? If you got the gold, then pay for it, right? If it physically does not, it physically and mentally does not mean anything to you, then just pay it. Same thing for a woman. If you feel like you got a nice dude and you want him to be a stay-at-home guy, pay for him. It literally does not matter. Now, I'm telling you, a lot of guys feel demasculated by this action because of society. It has nothing to do with you, but it has a lot to do with just the outward pressure coming in, saying, oh, your girl pay for everything you do? Oh, you ain't got a job? Oh, she making more than you? All of that shit is your own self-battle. It does not matter. As long as you and your partner are on the same page, let it be. Now, yes, I reference being chivalrous, being a gentleman. And I'm telling y'all this, and believe me when I say this, is that women still want their meal paid for. They want to go out and work. You know, it's still things that have evolved, but they still want to be treated right. So if you're a dude listening to this, and let's say, you know, you're, you're in the younger 20s, you're starting to go on a little bit more serious dates, just pick up the check, man. I'm telling you, you will only be the person that benefits from this. If on the first date, the check comes out and you say, hey, we split in this, why? Why would you want to start your relationship out like that? 
Why would like what do you think that's going to lead to? There's no there's no upside to that. It doesn't make any sense. Now that falls under the obligation piece. As we move into scenario two, we get into a lot more of the communication and crowd piece. And that is birthday parties. Birthday parties is a big thing. Post-college birthday parties, or let's say even uh, college birthday parties is hard because it's like not everyone's making money at all. Let's say one person has a little side job. One person doesn't really have student loans. It's the, 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 the web gets very complicated. So the best you can do is hope you have a solid crowd around you that will spot you when you need to. You spot them when they need to. And like that part is much more complicated. Post-college, as you start having these birthdays and you start having this, uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to DeLuca Gaucho, a nice pizza place in Austin, or not Austin, in Dallas, and you're hosting everyone. For myself personally, you're hosting everyone. Everyone comes out. You get a couple bottles of wine. Everyone gets whatever pizza they want. Is it my obligation to pay for everyone? No, not at all. I, it is not my obligation to pay for everyone's time to be here with me. Personally, my stance will always be, I'd like to cover something. I'd like to host you guys here today, right? So I may pick up all the alcohol tab. So, hey, yeah, yeah, everyone, everyone get, yeah, I'm going to get all these bottles of wine for the table. Now, understand something good. If I'm covering the alcohol cost, I fully control what I'm ordering. I'm not letting the homeboy down the table, whether he's my boy or not, order all this fancy stuff because he knows, he knows, oh, Ajay's paying for it. Let me get, let me get that expensive shit. No, no, no. If I'm hosting, right, you have to have full control of what you plan on paying for. The pizza and stuff is like, all right, bro, you know, like you came out to my birthday and you spent 30 bucks on pizza, 50 bucks on pizza. That's not a bad deal. It's not that bad. I'm still covering something. I am hosting you. Now, let's say my sister's running into this scenario actually more recently where it's like, I want to have a first birthday party for my now youngest nephew. And, you know, I got to get this haul. I got to get food. I got to get soda. I got to do this. You know, I got to make sure all the kids have a little, you know, thing they can do, an activity because everyone's got to stay busy somehow. I also have to have alcohol because there will be adults there. Am I supposed to cover all of that? No way. Now, it has changed a bit. It has changed a little bit where it's like back in the day. Back in the day, the potluck used to exist. Whether it was birthday parties, people gathering at other people's houses, the potluck existed. So this person would bring the soda. This person would bring the napkins because he's a lazy shit. This person would bring the plates. This person bringing the mashed potatoes. This person's bringing the protein. This person's bringing the dessert. And it all comes together. So not, no one party is spending a ridiculous amount. But now with the way things have changed with hosting now i understand i'm talking about picking up the check but the way things have gone with hosting is the same idea who is paying for what so when it comes to hosting stuff nowadays it's this assumption that has become unfair the person that is hosting has to pay for everything if i'm attending this person's event on a saturday i'm taking time out of my schedule to go to this person's event i expect there to be everything which is unfair. Now, I understand our generation does a, job, uh, a decent job at being like, oh, can I bring anything? The can I bring anything question, it, it, it's always a letdown, right? Like nobody likes actually being asked, can I bring anything? Because the things I need you to bring always pop up at the last minute. Oh, I need you to go get ice. And unless you're like my boy, like, you know, someone I can feel like I can throw responsibilities on you in a moment's notice, I'm not going to ask that. I'm not going to do that. So this weird responsibility always falls on the person hosting. Now, that's what I'm talking about as far as, you know, having a birthday party at the house. Going back to the birthday parties, which you'll see more so, uh, let's say pre-kids. Pre-kids, you're having a birthday party at a restaurant, this and that. Should I require people to pitch in? 
It's not the worst. It's not the worst look. And I promise you. Now, it's a different thing if you're going to, let's say, some super fancy restaurant. You got to give people a heads up. Now, this goes into that communication crowd piece that I keep talking about. You got to communicate. Hey, we're going to this restaurant and we think it's going to be this amount per person. So please prepare. If you do not want to engage, no problem. But this is just me communicating that. That is fine. Now, I've seen a lot of TikToks of a lot of disputes where it's like, oh, I just ordered mashed potatoes. That person ordered a steak. That person ordered that. That person ordered that. I didn't do no drink and I drank water and I had mashed potatoes. Why should I have to pitch in my card to be split evenly with other people that got more stuff? And yeah, it's a very fair scenario, right? You should be able to just get your check, which comes back to communication. If you're that person doing that, look, no shame to you. Always, you know, operate within your budget. But just communicate to the waiter, hey, yo, I'm gonna, I, I would like my stuff on a separate check before the full group check comes out. Because I know how they are going to go about paying it. Please give me my check separately so I can pay it. It's not the worst. Sure, it might be a little embarrassing for a little bit. You're not going to see that fucking waiter again. You are not going to see that dude again ever in your life. So who cares? And if these friends are clowning you for you ordering mashed potatoes and water, why are you at that birthday dinner? Communication, 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 man. Now I go back a little bit. Like I said, it's a giant web because this is how things just bounce back and forth in my head. Going back to the date piece, right? As you get into a longer term relationship, is it your obligation to continuously pick up the check? I said, no, you have to communicate that with your partner, right? How do you go about doing that? Personally, and I'm just telling y'all what my experience has been, is just saying it straight up. Literally just saying it straight up. Hey, you got this? In a nice manner, right? You're not, you're not, the check's not coming out and you throwing it at her, right? That's rude. If you start going to the bathroom when the check comes out, bro, you, you, you in the wrong scenario. But just straight up asking it. Don't don't pitter powder around. You know, don't don't uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Meander. Don't fluff all that nonsense. Just literally ask, yo, you got this? Or just notice the behavior, right? Sometimes that's a clear indicator. Now we're getting to some relationship stuff and we're gonna quickly get out of this, but that is a piece of the relationship. Obviously, I'm still with Isha, right? So Things were good on that front. But like I said, it's just communication where it's just like, hey, you got this. Hey, can you order lunch? Hey, can you do this? Be you know, like, and it's a fair ground. Obviously, will it always be uneven in a certain direction? Sure. Who cares, bro? Especially when it comes to things like bar tabs, right? You're getting alcohol and stuff like that. I, I don't want her going up to the bar, wrestling eight dudes to try to get to the front, ordering some drink. Uh, you got to yell at the bartender to get a drink. Then you filling out all this stuff. I don't, I'm perfectly fine with taking that on. I am perfectly fine with doing that. When it comes to stuff like that, you don't want to penny and nickel and, you know, always be looking at this like, oh yeah, you know, this Uber costs $20. Can we split it? You don't want to go down that rabbit hole, man. Just communicate it out. Now that is the piece as far as relationship stuff goes. Now, like I said, with the group stuff, you got to communicate, <laughs> as Alexa gives some notification, you got to communicate it out and you will be better off. You do not want to blindside someone out of the freaking blue. If you go to a bottle, right, if, if I'm attending some friend's bottle service and they order some thousand dollar Casa Azul, that's not on me, my boy. That is not on me. You told me this minimum was going to be 1500 and there's about seven of us in here. I did the math in my head. I know what I'm participating in. Now, if you blow that 15 and you get to 32, 4,800, we got a problem. We do have a problem. You blew that budget. Now, like I said, communication, communication. Let's say we're all having a good time. I say, hey, boys, I'm thinking about doing this. Are y'all down? 
at that point, it has to come across whether it's me doing this or it's us doing this. Then you go about it, everyone will be at ease. Don't blindside anyone. As I mentioned the bar slash alcohol piece, this is a piece that does get a bit hazy, I'd say. Because a lot of times when I go out in these social scenarios, and I've talked about this a little bit before, where it's like, I'm going to get around for this group that I'm in. If it's a group of 20 people, I'm not ordering 20 drinks, right? But if it's five of us, I'm going to ask everyone what they want. I'm going to go and I'm going to pay with a one card, with one credit card. It is hopefully my assumption in this social group that someone else will have me. I'm not asking all five of them to buy me a drink throughout the course of the night, but let's say there's another gentleman in the group. It is a social obligation for him to then go buy a round. I, I know you might be being like, oh, what? That's not on him. You decided to buy those drinks. Yeah, I did. Because that's just me being polite. That's me being chivalrous to another dude. And however many ladies are in the group. Because I didn't want y'all going up here. I didn't want y'all dealing with all that. I went up there. Y'all can have a seat. Hold the table down for us. I will go get the drinks. Bring them back to us. And we're good. But there is a bit of an expectation. If the night goes on and no one buys a drink, I don't care. I will live. I will survive the $120 that just got spent. I mean, hopefully I survived the $120 that just got spent. But you learn. You do learn. The next night, let's say a week later, we all go out and I do it again. And no one else buys me a drink. You start learning. And it does change your behavior. So then the next time we go out, if I go and I just buy myself and Isha a drink and you looking around like, oh, you didn't get us nothing? You goddamn right I didn't get you anything. Because you did not value me the same way I valued y'all. And it's like that. Now, with certain people that you're cool with, you're perfectly fine with spotting it. Whether it's on a weekly basis, whatever it is, if you, like I said, if you're cool with it, you're cool with it. Now, in Texas, there's a weird, like, you know, especially, you know, I went to college in Austin. I would do stupid stuff. Yeah, can I get 10 kamikazes? I pay 30 bucks, right? And, th and then you move on, right? You're not asking 10 other people to get you a drink. But it's a diff it's way different. Coming from Texas, I carried on those same habits where I would go out, get around for everyone, and then I wouldn't care about charging anyone. Now, that was Texas, right? Like, And I'm talking about pre, let's say, 2018, where you're buying around for everyone. Drinks are about $8 a pop, high-end, maybe $14 a pop. You come to L.A., you move to L.A., those same drinks are now $24 a pop. Let's say even $30 a pop. It, it's not sustainable. Like I keep saying, you just can't keep up that habit. You will die fast. And then you got to get over this mental curve of just being like, yeah, you know what? Here's the Venmo charge. You know what it's for, but here it is. Like, I know I have to send this out. I, I do a horrible job at or the sending out the Venmo charge afterwards. Whether I'm picking up the dinner tab and I take a picture of the receipt and there is an assumption everyone is paying for what they have because we're just here as a group meal. There is no birthday tied to it. There's nothing tied to it. But I put down my card so we have ease of access. No one else has to sign the receipt. No one else has to fill in the tip or do any of that stuff. And we're moving on with our night. Now, I understand if I do that, it's on me to charge people afterwards the correct amount, all that stuff. If they have any questions, be open to it. But look, here's a picture of the receipt. I do a horrible job at that. I will say that. The only time I do maybe decent is like bachelor parties because there's no, there's nothing in my head being like, oh, you know, like I hope, I hope they're cool with paying this. You know, I hope, I hope they're all right with this. Like I know I won't get any questions back. So you quickly add it and all that stuff. But like I'm saying is I still need to get better at that piece. But that's just almost like a Texas habit I'm still trying to shake off. Now, it is quite popular in, let's say, I'm just going to speak of Indian uncle tradition to want to pay. You want to pay. And I'm getting to that age where it's like, nah, you know, I got it. Nah, I got it. Nah, I got it. No, no, let, let me get this. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. You only come to Texas once a week. Oh, you only come to LA once, you know, every five years. Let me pay. You'll see that a lot. If you are in the... uh service industry, you probably have seen this with way more than just the 
Indian folks, right? Like someone's always trying to wrestle to pay the ice cream tab. They always want to pay for the coffee for the other person. So there becomes this little back and forth. Now that piece, it's not going anywhere, right? Like I kind of like how violent it gets. I kind of like that people, you know, do some slick shit. People, you know, will sometimes leave the dinner table. And the next thing you know, by the after we have dessert at the end of the night, someone says, oh, yeah, the, the tab's already been paid for by this gentleman. Boom. You know, yeah, I got you. There's a friend I have. Uh, I think I've mentioned him before, Chris and it, him and I always go back and forth doing this shit because we try to see. It's almost like playing chess, right? You try to see, oh, you know, did this person already pay for the tab? Oh, did he go to the restroom? Let, let me watch his ass because I know he's going to go to the waiter and try to pay for us. Now, nah, okay, you know what? Now nah, I know what I need to do. I need to call the restaurant beforehand and do this, do that, right? Like that, that's a game, right? And, and I like it, right? It, it, it's, it's engaging. You, you get to see how someone thinks through a scenario and you see how much they're putting forth to appreciate you, to pay for you. Now that's a certain type of person. But going back to the violence piece, where like, let's say we get five ice creams and there's two dudes trying to fight each other to pay for it. And, the, you know, the person behind the register is just like, oh, you know, like what? Well, this person handed me the card first. I have to take it. First of all, there are rules behind that. There are rules behind that. If you are the person behind the ice cream register and a guy and a girl try to hand you their card at the same time, there is a proper answer. There is a proper answer. You take the guy's card. You take the guy's card. I don't want to hear all this, oh, uh, you know what, well, women can pay too. I get it. But like I said, we're still standing on chivalrous ground. Take the guy's card. The lady probably makes way more than the dude. She probably does way more in life than him. But for this $6 transaction of ice cream, take the guy's card. Didn't think it would get this heated, huh? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty serious thing, right? Like a lot of people run into this with birthday parties, baby showers, whatever it is, right? A lot of people run into these scenarios. Now, one thing that I have recently started doing, right? One, I, I, I stopped wrestling because it's just like, all right, you know, like I, I've spent so many years with the same people being like, no, nah, nah, let me get it, let me, let me get it, let me get it now. That sometimes I, I try to like uh, pull the rug, pull the chair from the person. So if they're like, oh, you know, let me get this. I'll be like, all right, cool. And then, and then there's no back and forth. And it, you, you, the person almost feels like, oh, shit, you know, did I just trip and fall onto something? No. Nah. You know, like, we're perfectly fine. I have no problem paying for it. But since you're going to offer, I'm going to take it. Now, that piece I'm still getting better at. Taking the uh, handout, I'm still getting better at that piece. And the other piece that I have gotten much better with, with age, and almost like I've gained an appreciation for, is allowing the older gentlemen to pay. I used to go out to dinner and I used to try to like, you know, uh, pay for my dad's meal or, or we would, me, my dad, my mom, and let's say a group of friends would go out to dinner and I would try to pick up the tab. And, and there's almost like this, I saw it in The Sopranos where Tony Soprano was basically like, you eat, I pay. I think the scenario was the dad took his daughter and her boyfriend to lunch. He tried to, the the boyfriend tried to be slick and pay for the dinner tab, and t Tony Soprano just lost it. You eat, I pay. For the younger guy to pay for the older guy, it is almost it is like the most demasculating shit you could think of, because as a father, right at the core base of a father, or even just let's say a gentleman, right? An older fellow. Let's say the guy didn't have any kids, but he's taking out his nephews, all that stuff to a lunch, a dinner, whatever it is. The one thing they want to do is provide. They want to provide. So if you take that away from them, you might as well just stab them, bro. You might as well take the knife from the dinner table and just shove it in their chest. Obviously, yes, this is a bit satirical, but I'm being serious here a little bit. Actually, a lot of bit, where it's just like, do not pay for the older gentleman. If you go to a dinner and, let, okay, look, obviously, like I said, everyone's scenario is their own, but I'm just giving advice here. If you go to a dinner with, let's say, your girlfriend and her dad, don't try to be slick. 
do not try to be slick and think, oh, you know what? I'm going to pay for it. So then, you know, like he's going to appreciate me more. He's going to see me as someone that can provide. It's not going to look like that, my man. And I'm telling you, obviously, yes, offer. Offer be like, hey, can I pitch in? Can I, you know, can I pick up the check? Do that piece. But expect the rejection. And then after that, all you got to do, whether, look, this covers the entire thing. Whether you're on a date, whether you're in a birthday party, whether you're going out with some older folks and you get paid for, just say thank you. That's all you got to do. Just say thank you. And I'm telling you, that person that's paying, boom, fine, just like that. Like I said, man, it's a scenario that a lot of people are running into. And yes, in a COVID world, a lot of these social constructs didn't exist, but the stuff's coming back with weddings, birthday party, everything ramping up back to 100%. I mean, it's already at 100%, right? But it's like, you will be exposed to it much, much more. Depending on what age you are, and let's say you haven't fully figured out how to surf the waters, you're going to see it a lot more. Guy, girl, it doesn't matter. 